this is this is good. The application's running. We can all and of course Spring Source Tool Suite supports debugging and iterating through all the code and so on. Uh, but you can also do more. You can actually um, you can actually use the Spring Source Tool Suite to take advantage to, to take advantage of TC Server Developer Edition, uh, which provides more analysis of your application. So, for example, I can load up the Spring Insight dashboard in the background, and this gives me a great way to look at my application and to actually introspect how long everything is taking and how long things are, are you know, going. So, for example, this is my Spring Service web application, and you can see the sort of summar, summar, summary view of all the data and all the requests. And then you can drill down to this particular controller and this particular endpoint, and then you can drill down even further uh, to individual requests. And, and analyze them, right? So you can see here, I've got information about the Git request I made and when it was made and the status and all that. And then, and because this is because the Spring Framework, you know, because Spring Source Tool Suite knows about your object graph and because it knows that under to read Spring uh, components, it knows what's happening here, and it can detect where your object, where your application is spending time. So, for example, the request comes in. Spring, the Spring MVC dispatches it to a controller. The controller hits the, ser the Hibernate uh, session in our service, which is the Entity Manager. And then that, in turn, generates a query, which is this guy. And you, you can actually see the generated SQL that was generated in the back background, and then actually the, re the request parameters. And then you can see that it, it eventually forwarded to the view name customer, as we described, and that resolved to this particular template, and so on, right? So you get this great great introspection about everything that's happening in your application, and it just comes for free when you download Spring Source Tool Suite. Can you imagine how useful this would be if you had to debug, not your code, of course. You guys don't make bugs or have bugs in your code. I know that. But if somebody else gave you bad code and you wanted to debug it, this would be a great way to go, right? So basically, we're running short on time, so I'll wrap it up. But suffice it to say, the Spring Source Tool Suite is an easy way to get started with Spring, and uh, Spring itself is very powerful. Uh, you can download the Spring Source Tool Suite from springsource.com forward slash developer forward slash STS. So, okay. And uh, if you want more information and good introductory tutorials on all this stuff, check out blog.springsource.com forward slash category forward slash green means uh, for a good look at all the stuff we talked about here and then a lot more. You know, great in-depth tutorials that you can follow step by step and good source code that you can download as well. Um, at this point, we'll take questions, and we are we have uh, the privilege and the honor of having some great people from Spring Source also moderating questions. I'm sure you've seen them, uh, you know, answering questions in the meantime. Martin Lippert, in particular, is a key contributor to the Spring Source tool suite, and he's been there and answering questions. So we'll we'll jump back to that, and I'll answer questions as well if possible. Okay, let's see. Whoa. Um, so, yes, the uh, the video will be on on the Spring Source Dev channel on Monday. I think I think that's right. Um, the palm of the web application is the only thing that's interesting about that is that we've added a uh, we've referenced our JPA application. I'll make this code available and you can take a look at it there. But it is exactly what's generated from the uh, the template itself. Um, what tool do I suggest for creating JSP views? Well, of course, Spring Source Tool Suite. I mean, it's a, it's got uh, all the support you need for JSP that comes with standard clips and then some. So it's, it's a good environment for that. Um, somebody asked me which is better when it comes to Spring configuration, and it's important to drive home. It's there's nothing better. One is it's depending. It's based on your choice, right? Some people prefer the XML because it can be it can live outside the Compilation unit, you know, and it's perhaps a little bit more uh, system in friendly. Some people prefer the Java config because it's a uh, uh, you get the type safe type safety of the Java language and so on. And both of them benefit from being configured in a single place. So you have a single artifact that you change to change the uh, the actual application itself. Um, let's see. I'm using Spring Service JPA by referencing it in Maven, right? I just have a dependency on that. Uh, the source code will be sa shared, by the way. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So Spring MVC and Struts are are uh, very similar beasts. Uh, Struts is 
uh, obviously the most common used version of Struts is Struts 1.0, and there are more people using Spring MVC now. So it, um, I wouldn't, I don't know that there's much to compare. One's a lot older than the other, and they both are architecturally kind of similar, but Spring MVC is by far uh, more flexible and more integrated into the uh, other kinds of scenarios you might have today. Um, for XSD extraction, so there's a, you can use standard XSD tools, right? I mean, if you're trying to build your namespace or trying to build a, a contract or schema in web services, so the question is, is there any XSD extraction support in the Spring itself? Well, no, not particularly, but it, again, you can use all, you know any kind of standard XSD generation mechanism you want, and that'll do. Um, Want to validate? Well, so some of the question is, I want to validate the stuff at compile time, uh, and of course, Java Config is great for that, right? You you can use Java Config to validate everything at compile time. That's the that's one of the key benefits of that. So Spring. Oh, another question is, does Spring MVC support Server 3.0? Uh, of course, it works already uh, with 3.0 because it's backwards compatible. Spring 3.1, which is forthcoming, you can already get the latest and greatest M1 release. Uh, Will also support web.xml free or you know no X, no web.xml uh, files, so you can actually use the the initialization mechanism in Servlet 3.0 to actually load a load a servlet without actually any configuration at all. So it's XML free, if you will. Um, and of course, there's support for asynchronous asynchronous endpoints and all that stuff is coming up in Spring 3.1. But yeah, it works just fine with 3.0, and some of the features already supported, but then very large majority of it will be in the uh, forthcoming Spring 3.1 release. Um, how hard will it be to migrate a Spring 2.5 project into a Spring 3 project? Dead simple. Up upgrade the uh, version numbers and you're good to go. Spring is backwards compatible. That's the beauty of it. The component model you see is, uh, you know, we support everything that we've supported from day one, and of course, going forward, we'll always support backwards compatible. We don't change everything, so it's just, just change, upgrade the jars for the most part. I mean, I'm sure there's one or two deprecated classes, but you won't notice. Um, so Spring Source TC Server is uh, our administrator-friendly sort of version of Tomcat. It is Tomcat, though, and you can use it with uh, all the same tools that you use for Tomcat. It also comes with management options and things that administrators will like to make it more robust in production. And of course, as you can see here, in the Spring Source Tool Suite, we provide the developer edition of TC Server, which has all, this great, all these great tools for building web applications. All right. Um, I think I think I'm out of. I've got. Yeah, a lot of these questions are the same. So I'm. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, one question is uh, at Bean annotation. Can we specify scopes and prototypes and so on? And yes, you can. You can. You can say that I want a Bean to be, uh, you know, prototype scoped or web scoped or whatever. But that was a little bit more advanced than I wanted to get into in this webinar. At component and at service are both stereotype. At component is the base annotation. And it tells Spring that you want this bean to be managed by the Spring framework. Add service is just a specialization of that. And really, uh, you know, they're largely interchangeable. There's a few documented cases where it's different, but otherwise it's the same.